welcome, Marina. Best of luck. Okay. Uh, today I'm going to talk about the I don't mean one and the t-shirt. So meet Meager, um, a large fish from Europe and Africa. And a bit of background first. Uh, so Meager is fished, Meager is farmed, Meager is migratory. Every year it travels from seas and oceans to estuaries to breed. And what is interesting about it is that it aggregates, it forms large groups and starts singing uh, during spawning. Actually, this behavior is not unique to meager. Um, other fishes of this family, of its family, also do it. Which brings us to the idea that some fish are not mute. Um, there are, yes, they do communicate, and there are at least four, four sound types and fishes. Well, what fish can convey to each other is that they don't feel comfortable, that they are ready to defend their territory, their mates, their food, uh, that they invite a potential partner to mate, and finally they can tell that they can tell where they are located, who they are, I mean the species, and 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 how good they are, of course. Uh, you may know that breeding behavior is complex, it involves different actions, and actually all the sounds can be heard during breeding. So how does Meager make sounds? Uh, it's a bit of how a drum works. Uh, Meager contracts special sonic muscles against a swim bladder and the sound appears. Um, I wasn't sure I would be able to play you a recording, so, but just to give you a very um, common idea of how it can sound, it's something like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, well, <clears throat> uh, this is how it looks uh, on the oscillogram and spectrogram, and uh, you can see that it looks like a fence, and every vertical bar of this fence represents a pulse. Uh, a pulse is a very, very short sound made of um, a single bit of the sonic muscles against a swim bladder. And in this picture, what I want you to pay attention to is two important uh, sound parameters that are often studied in vocal fish, pulse period, uh, which is time between two neighboring pulses, and sound duration, uh, which is time the entire sound lasts, mm, expressed in numbers. You can see that uh, sound parameters of meager vary. Actually, in many fishes, um, sounds vary. So they can be higher, lower, shorter, longer, louder, softer, and they depend on a range of factors. And we know that in many fish, uh, in many fishes, um, what a temperature plays a role, uh, what a temperature affects um, sound characteristics. Uh, that is why we decided to find out how sound duration and pulse period in meager correlate with temperature. And if they do depend on temperature, what can we do um, with this knowledge, how we, can, how we can apply it to practice, 
for example, to conservation management and aquaculture. What we already knew is that in a closely related species, um, fish, you can see it in the picture, uh, there is a decrease in pulse period with temperature, and this is what we expected to see also in meager. What we did is we collected uh, the wild meager sounds in the Tegas estuary with a hydrophone uh, during the meager spawning season at different temperature at different temperatures. Uh, this is how temperature changed over the sampling period. Then the sounds were processed with Raven uh, software. Uh, 234 signals were randomly selected. Um, only signals of good quality were selected. Then sound duration and pulse period were measured. Uh, I cal calculated pulse period as a mean of five pulse, uh, pulse periods uh, somewhere in the middle of the signal when the pulse period was stabilized. And this is what I normally saw um, in the software when I worked with uh, a signal of good quality. The statistics, the statistics, uh, multiple regression models were applied, except for temperature, uh, we considered other factors uh, which could affect uh, sound duration and pulse period as well. So the proportion of lunar light, tide range, sunset and sunrise hour, and chorus duration. Mm, about the chorus, um, you may remember that Meager often sings in uh, groups, so sometimes the signals from individual fish um, are overlapped and it is sometimes difficult to recognize um, the individuals, the signal from a single fish, but it is very easy to see um, a continuous chorus. So one fish starts the signal, the other continues and so on. Uh, what we found at the first time, uh, at, at the first sight, um, it could look like we saw um, statistically significant correlation of sun duration with water temperature and the proportion of lunar light, but actually these two variables um, can hardly be uh, good explanations. A uh, good explanation for variability in the sound duration because uh, actually they contributed not so much to uh, the variability because they had quite low partial correlation. But as for pulse period, we found a significant uh, correlation of the pulse period with water temperature and a tide range in from which water temperature seems to explain the var variability of pulse period pretty well. Um, now what we know, it seems that in MIGER pulse period does decrease with temperature, uh, that was as expected. Actually, uh, weak fish, closely related species, behaves the same way. We cannot actually compare our results with the findings of other scientists because nobody actually mm, investigated uh, the effect of temperature on meager, on meager sounds. But um, a group of scientists, uh, scientists. Uh, showed uh, demonstrated similar results uh, when, although they um, investigated uh, the effect of seasonal variations on meager sounds. 
uh, still uh, they mentioned that when temperature raised, uh, when temperature uh, increased, pulse period decreased. Um, <clears throat> so why um, should we know uh, the effect of temperature on MIGR? Actually, uh, there are two reasons. The first one is that we can use this knowledge in aquaculture. Um, it was found out previously that in captive MIGR, uh, approaching spawning events has a similar effect. So, uh, pulse period shortens and sound duration increases. Actually, that group of scientists uh, suggested monitoring pulse period and sound duration, the, monitoring the changes in pulse period and sound duration, uh, which um, may let us predict spawning events. And this is good, but uh, now we know that temperature has a similar effect, and that is why it should be also considered for better predictions. Mm, besides, we can go even further and use this knowledge um, and apply this knowledge to wild meager as well. Uh, actually, we can use it um, in conservation programs. Uh, today, there are evidences that meager may be vulnerable uh, due to overfishing and habitat degradation. And uh, it may be possible that we will need um, to map uh, sp meager spawning sites. Um, for that, uh, our um, this monitoring of changes in sound characteristics can be useful. Actually, it works with some other fishes, and again, the same outcome. Uh, as we know, the temperature affects the uh, sound characteristics. We should use uh, it uh, for our predictions to avoid mistakes. Of course, at the moment, it is not possible yet to apply it right now uh, because uh, many other factors can also interfere and can also affect the sound characteristics and they should also be considered as well. And of course, uh, before applying this um, knowledge to practice, we should validate these predictions uh, by building a model uh, first and, for example, looking um, how, it uh, how it is related to... Um, oh, how it can be proved, for example, by egg collections. Collection. Well, <laughs> that was all I wanted to share with you. Thank you.